Welcome back. Well, I thought today we'd just grab ourselves some coffee and chat. I don't have anything in particular on the agenda that I want to talk about. I just thought we'd, you know, chat, which is kind of difficult because, of course, you know, you're chatting, but I, I don't hear what you're saying, so I'm going to have to pretend. Anyway, when we come back, I'll tell you what I've been up to lately, and, you know, you can tell me what you've been up to, even though I'm not going to be able to hear you, but we can pretend. See you in a minute. This is one of the things I've been doing lately. This is Audie's laser mouse. I don't know if my cat is exceptionally smart or exceptionally stupid, but it's definitely one of the two because he will not play with the mouse. Uh, he knows what's going on. He sees the little red dot. Yet he'll watch it, won't chase it. It's just like, no. And I'm not sure if it's because he's just too dumb to work out what he's supposed to do. It's like, here's the red dot, go, chase. Or because he's smart enough to realize there's not a lot of point in chasing a little red dot. You know, this isn't a real mouse. There isn't anything tasty on the other end of this. So why do it? Is it going to pet him? No. Is he going to be able to chase it down and kill it? No. So what else is going on for him? So I'm not sure what it is. I either have a very clever cat or a very stupid cat. And I, I, I don't know how to tell the difference. Um, one of the things I was doing this weekend was uh, trying to get all kinds of stuff listed in my Etsy shop, mostly from the uh, last few shoppings that that I did with Jocelyn Black Rose and um, Emmitsburg, Maryland. Uh, those were those, remember those, those receipts that were just turning into the great American novel, yes. Um, I picked up a lot of salt and pepper shakers in particular, and I wanted to get those listed so that people could have a chance to like poke through them, see what they wanted. And I think it's always better to have a nice variety. So, because sometimes people will say, I want a salt and pepper shaker. I, I do. And then they're looking at it saying, well, I don't know if I want this one or that one, but I want one and they grab one. And better to have a lot of choice. So that's what I was doing this weekend. And I realized I'm coming right to the end of the stuff that I have to list on Etsy. Uh, once I am through with this batch of listings, which should take place either later today or tomorrow, um, the only thing I have left to list after this is going to be the project lamps. And I do have some project lamps, uh, lamps that we've worked on as as part of projects and I should probably list those. Um, I had hoped uh, to do giveaways but I have so many many giveaway items that I really need to I need to do something else with the lamps instead of just further backing up giveaway items. So um, we have two outstanding giveaways. Uh, Audie hasn't picked winners yet. Uh, looks like Melissa W., who won the, uh, the watch face bracelet that Karen Hopper made and uh, donated. That's a real sweet piece. Um, I heard from her, so she'll be getting in touch with her address. That's going to be going out. Audie will very soon 
start picking winners for the Rose Medallion pieces. And um, I should probably explain about the Rose Medallion pieces because people have been writing in saying, well, does Randy make these? Where can I buy them? Um, Randy does make jewelry. I don't know if she does it professionally, but certainly this is not amateur work. This is definitely somebody who is making jewelry. Um, but the Rose Medallion pieces are pieces that, well, I was about to say survived, but they really kind of didn't survive the schoolhouse disaster. We did have some pieces that survived the, um, this piece right here. Let's get you. This particular set, cup and saucer, they're, they're not actually a set. They are, it's a cup and a saucer. They do not go together. They were both lightly damaged in uh, the schoolhouse. So when the tree came down, took down the roof, took everything out with it, uh, we had a nick on the cup, a nick on the saucer. I was able to do a repair on these. Fantastic. So that was salvageable. There were several other pieces that were just shattered. They were broken to little bits. They were, yeah, whatever they used to be, they're never going to be that again. So Randy had asked uh, if she could take the pieces, and she just started making jewelry out of it. And this is great. It's wonderful giveaways. For me, it's very sentimental because these are things that you know, almost survived the schoolhouse or survived in their own way. Yes, they were supposed to be plates and saucers and things. They're not anymore. They're never going to be that again. Now they're going to be something else. They're, they have a whole new life now. And that life is pieces of jewelry. So I think it's great. There's, there's like a life lesson in this. So I'm very glad to have that. And uh, our video tomorrow, by the way, is going to be those pieces. I'm going to take them all out, show them to you, take some photos. And this was Randy's suggestion, by the way, that, you know, if you want to see them, we'll just lay them all out because pretty soon they're going to be given away and they're not going to be around for me to sort of capture this moment in time. So that's what I'm going to do tomorrow, just show you all of those pieces, let you take a look at them. And... Um, and they're all going to be giveaways. They are all going out. Um, there's a, one piece was already given away. That went to Jocelyn. Uh, when she saw all these pieces, I was just like, look, would you like a necklace? And she said, yes, indeed. So Jocelyn has one of these pieces. And so the rest, like I said, giveaways. So in terms of being able to buy them, no, they're not for sale. But they're going out for free. So hopefully we're going to find good homes for all of these beautiful necklaces, all kinds of necklaces too, all different styles. They're just, um, I mean, it's remarkable because usually I find that when people make jewelry or when, when people make anything, they sort of have their own style and they stay with it. And so if they're, makers of contemporary jewelry, that's what they stick with. If they're if they're a little more inclined to be makers of old-fashioned jewelry, that's what they stick with. But this is all kinds of different styles of, of pieces. So we're going to document that. And if we have some more time, which I'm hoping we will, I'm hoping that, that we'll have enough time to show you the remaining pieces of Karen Hopper's uh, stuff because we still have more of Karen's jewelry um, and stuff because um, in addition to jewelry we have that beautiful little picture frame and that note holder um, just great stuff so we'll put those in too so that you can see what all the upcoming giveaways are going to be and then It'll give you an opportunity to say, well, this is the one I'm going to put my name in for. Of course, there's no limit. You can put your name in for as many as you want. Audie doesn't care, and 
you know, he's the one picking the winners, so it just doesn't matter to him. As far as he's concerned, put your name in for everything. He loves people. All he cares about is somebody paying attention to the cat. So as far as he's concerned, if you are, you know, signing up for a giveaway, that's attention for a cat somewhere down the road. So, but, so that's what we were working on in terms of stuff around here. We're going to get everything I can sorted into the eBay shop. Still got plenty of giveaways, so the project lamps are probably going to end up going into the eBay shop, or the Etsy shop, I'm sorry, as well. Um, I need to see if I have some uh, shades for these. The shades were all in the schoolhouse, which is probably, that probably does not bode well for them. And the other thing I decided that uh, we were going to do because, um, excuse me, we haven't done this in a while. We have a new book. Uh, this is not actually a new book. This is actually an old book. Word Origins and Their Romantic Stories. So, I've been very remiss. I haven't been doing Word of the Day. We went through everything our Portuguese gentleman had to tell us. But it's not as if I don't have a house full of books just like this. And that was something that occurred to me while I was... Well, actually, I, yeah, I'm going to tell you, it's embarrassing, but I was looking for places to stack tidbit trays because I've got a whole bunch of them that are... Actually, no, most of them have not been listed. I've got a whole bunch of them that are going to be listed um, probably within the next 24 hours if they're not listed already. Um, and I need a place to put them because I, I don't disassemble them and pack them up um, after I photograph them. I, I leave them all, well, here's a, I leave them all together like this so that if I need to take additional photographs. If I, I've always done that when, whenever I've done online selling, I always make sure that you know I have everything out and ready and available because you never know when people are going to say that's terrific. But can you show me a picture of the bottom of the plate or of the back of whatever or you know whatever. People just occasionally want pictures or measurements or something that that I haven't thought they wanted, so I didn't include it. So that's why they will stay like this, and it's not until they're sold that I start to disassemble and pack. And, uh, of course, packing is something that you should not do until the items are sold anyway, because you never know if you're going to have multiple purchases going out to the same buyer, in which case you don't want, for example, you know, three sets of salt and pepper shakers in three little boxes. You want to put them all in one box and send them all out together. Um, and you certainly don't want to have to duplicate your efforts, you know, take them all out of the boxes and so on and redo that. You wait until you're ready to actually pack them and ship them. So um, I ran out of places to stack tidbit trays and they were on top of bookcases and they were there were two of them sitting on a chair. Audie went over. He was very disappointed. He wanted to sit on the chair. Um, he went over. He did a little sniffing and decided he would go sit somewhere else. And while I was doing that, I was over at the bookcase and found our friend. Yes, I heard you. You can come over if you'd like. And I thought well, we would take a look at some interesting words. Words are so much fun. Um, let's see. Business terms. How about we just grab a business term? 
Um, calculate suggests pebbles. When a shopkeeper calculates his accounts, he is apt to use an adding machine. But in Rome 2,000 years ago, the merchant figured his profit and loss in a more primitive way. He used what he called calculi, or little stones, um, as his counters. So the Latin term calculus, pebble, not only gave us calculate, but this simple Latin term gave us our word calculus, which we applied to one of the most complicated forms of modern mathematics. I did not know that. Did you know that? I, I had no idea. So calculus is a little stone. Um, as I think of it, it makes sense. Calcium, um, calcify. I'm, I'm seeing the word root now, but I didn't know that. So let's grab another one. I love learning something new. Budget, just a little bag. French merchants of the Middle Ages carried their money around in a bougette, or little bag, a word that descended from the Latin bulga, a leather bag. The English word bulge comes from the same source. Belly is a very distant relative, too, although that's not so obvious, but they all have the idea of swelling in them. When a storekeeper made up his budget in those days, he opened his bag to find out his resources and counted the cash. Interesting. Um, butcher slaughtered the goats. Well, I don't know if I'm going to like this one. The original occupation of the butcher seems to have been uh, the slaying of he-goats. Our word comes from the early French bocher, butcher, derived from bock, goat. An old French ordinance states that the bocher shall not cast the blood of goats in public ways, nor slaughter the goats in the streets. Well, thank heavens for that. In olden times, the butcher was of the very oh, was of the very elite of tradesmen. It's an awkward sentence, as he, as is evidenced by a 14th century writer who reports a woman that was queen of France by heritage wedded a bocher for his fairness. So I guess we have a French queen who married a butcher. I did not know we had one of those. Um, I did know we had an English queen who married the uh, stable boy, which is how we got the Tudor dynasty, but that's a story for another time. So if you like the idea of doing some word origins, we just grabbed a couple of them. Those, by the way, were probably on the dull side. I can go through this. I can actually cherry pick and get some really interesting ones, which I didn't do this time. I just grabbed a couple at random. But some of these are absolutely fascinating. And as you can see, this is a big book. This can take us through a great, deal of pandemic social isolation time. All right, so tomorrow the video coming up is going to be the giveaway pieces. We're definitely going to look at Randy's jewelry and hopefully we'll have time to look at Karen's and the soaps from Dinky Loves as well because those are all um, giveaways that are coming up. We've got two outstanding right now. Those are both Randy's pieces. And remember, if you want to be considered for the giveaway, just go back to those videos, um, pick out whichever piece you're interested in, just make sure to post a note, thank you, Randy, because that's where we're taking them from, from those videos. And Audie is not going to be picking winners until everyone's had a chance to sign up. So in the meantime, 
but we have had some viewers who have very, very kindly offered to do uh, outreach for people who need it. So if you are at home alone, if you are starting to starting to get depressed or anxious or anything at all from the social isolation, we have folks just go through the comments and they will identify themselves. They'll let you know they're there. They're willing to act as sort of informal pandemic buddies. And I think that's great. So thank you to all of you who have graciously offered to do this. And for those of you who need it, you know, remember, we're going to be able to match you up. So just go through the comments. When you see somebody who says, I'm willing to, out, uh, I'm willing to do the outreach, let them know. Just shoot them a comment back and say, hey, I'm here. I need it. So we are going to get through this. Um, I am still optimistic, could be crazy optimistic, still hoping that by the end of the month, we will be passing out of the lockdown. That was what they originally said. I hope they stick with it because, boy, I don't have another month of this in me. I really don't. I'm already talking to the cat. Well, no, I always, I always talk to the cat. But I'm actually expecting him to answer, which I guess is probably the main difference. So take care of yourselves. Be, be safe. Be well. Be sane. And... If you feel like you're starting to come to the end of your rope, remember, leave a comment. We'll get somebody to get in touch with you. We will work this out. We don't want anybody taxed beyond their ability to cope. Okay. So, yes, I know, honey. So, have a great day. I will see you all tomorrow.